Hey, how you doing, Stephen? Good. You got me now? I do. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Oh, it's great, man. I'm always uh, pleased when you let me come on your show. You bet. And not only can we talk about the uh, TV show tonight, we can talk about the new book, Meat Eater, Adventures from the Life of an American Hunter. When did this come out? Its official release date was Tuesday, Tuesday. September 4th. Uh-huh. So uh, it's still, it's, if you order a copy, it'll still be warm when you get it. Nice, nice. Yeah. And, and you know about, uh, you know, eating fresh and reading fresh, right? <laughs> exactly. You don't, you don't want to get a stale book. book to, you don't want your books to be aged, Exactly. Man. All right, so you've been out doing uh, a, a book tour. We've got a, a clip here uh, of a recent appearance of yours. Do you mind if we share some of this? Oh, please, please. All right, let, let's take a look. Stephen, don't you think these animals you've killed want to live as much as you or I do? In fact, isn't this just a rationalization for murdering innocent creatures? To shoot innocent animals, animals that have beating hearts, that run from you simply because they want to live. They're not armed with copper bullets or lead bullets. I think you're not really asking a question, you're making a point, but I'm going to answer like a question. I would say that if you, if you look at the grand spectrum of, of species on this planet, you treat humans like a species, you know, we're one. You'll, you'll not find many that, that don't prey on other kinds. People say generally, behaviorally and anatomically modern humans have been around for maybe 75,000 years. On this continent alone, people hunted for 15,000 years, notwithstanding the last couple hundred years. So to not hunt is in some way historically off the mark. It's a new, to not hunt is a fairly new experiment in a human sense. To ask a wolf not to hunt anymore is an impossible question, you know? So if someone comes to me and says that they don't want human hunting, we don't want to hunt, I kind of am like, coming from what perspective? The you know life I mean? is sacred. Yeah, I, I know that life is sacred, but I think that I, what I admire is not, I admire the deer, but I admire the idea of deer more than the individual deer. And I can assure you that I know more about deer than you ever will. And I've learned that through hunting for them. And I probably care about them in a way that's deeper than something you're going to experience from having a removed perspective on it. But I really, beyond that, I can't really say that much because like all predatory animals with canine teeth, you know, we eat meat. And if you're going to eat it, talking with uh, Stephen Ranella and, and Stephen, I thought that was absolutely fascinating. Uh, did you get this a lot, the, uh, the, the vegetarian slash vegan argument? You know, I never get it in such a um, considerate way. And I think that's one of the things, like, <laughs> you know, this has been bouncing around the web quite a bit. And I think it's one of the surprising things about it is, is, is the gentleman had the courtesy to sit there and wait till I actually called on him with his hand raised in the air during a Q&A process. All right. So in that way, I admire the guy. Never interrupted anything I had to say and let me give my answer. And though we are fundamentally, we'll, we will never line up, right? We're fundamentally at, we're fundamentally disagreeing with each other. Right. But he was cool and civil about it. And what I have found in the past is people will ask, you know, you know they'll say things like, how can you act like you love animals when you really just want to kill them and then they'll never give me a chance to talk you know so in that way it is something that I come up with but rarely is it someone who really just seems to almost betray a sense of honest curiosity about what the answer is you know right so in that way it was kind of refreshing man but it happens enough but i never ever really am quite prepared for it and when <laughs> i walk into a room to do a thing like this i'm always kind of looking like who's going to be the guy <laughs> right who's going to be the you know, and I don't guess correctly. You know, I'm never. I always think like, oh, that'll be the guy. Then it winds up being some guy who wants to ask me how he can start getting more squirrels. You know what I mean? So, well, you like, know, uh, again, rarely, rarely, Stephen, can you judge a book by its cover? Now, I can tell by this one that it's a good book. But uh, you know, I, I, that's. The, but, but see, that's the thing. I mean, you look at, you know, the the cross section of, of of whether it's your viewers on television, whether it's your readers, those who show up for uh, you know your your events. And I'm not so sure that it is so easy to pick out the hunter from the vegetarian these days. No, it's not, man. And you made an interesting point where, you know, the things I'm doing, I'm kind of scattered all over the place. Like I'm on a, you know, we do Meat Eater on Sportsman Channel. Yeah. Okay. 
And Sportsman Channel is a really, from a hunting perspective, like a really sophisticated audience that has a lot of familiarity with hunting, a lot of familiarity with hunting television. You know, it's kind of an inner dialogue between hunters on a show like that. But then you put out a book, and, and you know, and you're sent to, and, and you're promoting it in places like New York, or, you know, I'll do events in, in, in like urban centers in Denver, I'll do things in San Francisco. And you wind up in, in these situations where, you're not just preaching to the choir like you do when you're on, you know, on, on Sportsman Channel, which is, you know, a, a great audience for me. But I'm thrust in these situations where I don't really know what's going to come my way. You know what I mean? Right. Th- through various things. And I think in that way, it's something I really would like other hunters to spend a little more time thinking about and being a little more ready for those scenarios when they come up because it gives you a great chance to really have – Oftentimes, it gives you a great chance to really have a logical debate with someone, and it's too easy to fall back on anger or to feel like you're being persecuted, and you lose your ability to really articulate what it is you want to say to people. So I think that like the lessons I've learned through, you know, through through book publishing and, and writing for some non, you know, magazines that are not necessarily traditional to a hunting and fishing audience, the things I've learned are things that other hunters, I hope, and gun owners can take to heart. You know, and be ready to have those debates with people and walk away where everyone feels respected and everyone feels listened to. Well, yeah, and I got to say, I thought you you did a very good job uh, of doing that in your response to that gentleman. Uh, and, and you made some excellent points, including, I, I think, maybe the most important one, and that is when you talk about human experience and what it means to be human, uh, it is far more human to hunt than to not hunt generally speaking, in terms of, you know, the entire scope of human history. Yeah, and there's no matter how you define human history, where you want to draw the line, right, how how far back you want to go or whatever your personal belief system is about antiquity of man, you cannot argue that during that time we've been hunting. And the thing I often tell people, and I, I, I wish I would have brought it up to this guy, the thing I often tell people, the oldest paintings we know about, Okay, mm-hmm. the oldest representational art that we know about in the form of paintings is cave paintings that go back some thirty, forty thousand years that depict prey animals, and they were drawn by hunters. So the fact that these people this long ago, the first people we know about who ever like went to make a drawing on a wall, chose to chose to honor their prey animals through art. You know, right. And I think that it's no more different for us. Uh, we have to be just as bold today when we go forward and say that we honor these animals that we hunt, we respect these animals that we hunt, we're moved by the animals that we hunt, and we're kind of the same in spirit. When I write about a hunting trip, if I go and write about a to go bear hunting up in my place, Prince Wales Island, I go out there with my buddy Ronnie, and we go out to hunt, and I come home and write about it. That's my cave painting, man. I mean, that's my way of paying honor to the to the pursuit of game, you know? Yeah. And I think that just to carry that with us and kind of try to reflect that is going to go a long way. Because another point I like to make to people, and I know uh, you, you caught me in a preachy mood, but <laughs> another point I like to make to people is right now uh, something like 95% of American adults do not hunt, you know? Yep. And, and in a democracy, man, we live at their pleasure. So, and, and unfortunately right now, of that 95% that do not hunt, well over half of them have a favorable impression of hunting. Absolutely. We need to make sure to keep that going, man. Absolutely. Steve, we are almost out of time, but thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. Great talking to you, and uh, best of luck with the brand-new book, Meat Eater Adventures from the Life of an American Hunter, out now. And look forward to doing this again soon, man. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I'll come on anytime and, uh, and talk shop with All you. All right. Thanks, Steve, and have a great night, sir.